and we're back in my kitchen. I recently posted a video uh, showing how to make New Orleans style red beans and rice. But of course <laughs> the video was only how to make the red beans. So today I thought I'd do um, a relatively short video showing how to make white rice the way that it's been made in my family for literally for generations. So my family is from South America, from Peru, and they make a style of white rice, which even though it's very simple in terms of ingredients, it doesn't overpower any other part of the meal it may be served with. It's it's really quite delicious. Yeah. It's referred to as arroz graneado, which literally means grainy rice. So it's not sticky rice like the way the Japanese prepare it. It's rice that you theoretically at least should be able to separate each grain so that you can see, you can taste each grain separately if that's what you want to do. And it's a very simple dish, but it is really remarkably easy to screw up too. So I'm going to show you how I make it. I don't say it's foolproof because it's not, but it works, I'm going to say 90% of the time. And plus I'll show you some hacks how do you cheat the process towards the end to come up with the perfect uh, consistency uh, and flavor for the rice. Literally everything you need to make this arroz granel, this white rice. So in terms of util utensils, you need a uh, sieve, a pot, uh, appropriate in size to the amount of rice you're going to make, in this case a couple of cups of, pre of rice uh, before cooking. Uh, you need fresh garlic in terms of ingredients. You need the rice itself, which is just plain white, extra enriched, long grain white rice. This comes from Publix, but there's plenty of other good brands. You need some fresh garlic. You need some neutral oil, like canola oil or vegetable oil. Don't use olive oil for this dish. Uh, it's gonna just, it's gonna overpower the rice. You won't have that rice flavor that you want at the end. And of course we need salt. Just plain old salt. I've redeployed the utensils and the ingredients. Okay, so look, so here in the sink is the, uh, the sieve. Here, rice and some relatively thinly sliced garlic. So this is about three, maybe four cloves of garlic. Is that a lot of garlic for two cups of rice? Yes, it is, but this is how we eat it in Peru. This is how we make this rice in Peru. More importantly, this is how my mom likes her rice. So this is how I make it. Got a little cup there as a prop to hold up the sieve. The rice goes in the sieve. The garlic goes over here by the pot. So this is an essential step in this type of rice. And it is rinsing the rice. And rinse it until pretty much it runs almost clear underneath. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you're not supposed to rinse rice. The answer to that is yes, you're not supposed to rinse rice after you cook it. But to make this type of rice, you rinse it thoroughly before you cook it. What's the point of rinsing it? You're washing off some of the starch on the rice. And by washing off some of the starch, you make it possible to cook the rice, and yet at the end, the rice grains will still separate. Let's just let that sit there for a while and drain out even more. Meanwhile, over here, the pot is warm, but it's not hot. So it's really important that the pot or not be super hot. So. Canola oil, neutral tasting oil. Again, not not olive oil, not for this type. So I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of oil in the bottom of the, pan, of the pot. That looks about right for two cups worth of rice. Now I'm gonna add the garlic. I'm going to let the garlic heat up, soften up, release some of its flavor. But really important to keep an eye on this now. Make sure that you don't have it up too high in the temperature because the moment that you burn the garlic, it turns bitter. And bitter garlic is no good to anyone. 
So we're gonna let this cook in here for a couple of minutes. In the meantime, let's talk about salt. For two cups of this type of white rice, we're gonna use about a teaspoon of salt. It might be necessary at the end of the cooking process, I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit more. It might be necessary at the end of the cooking process to add some more salt, but you're gonna judge that at that moment in time. But you do need to add salt at the cooking, in the cooking phase. You can't just wait until the end when the rice is done and then toss in a handful of salt. It won't taste the same. And okay, now these bad boys are starting to bubble. That's what we want. They're softening up and they're releasing their incredible garlicky fragrance. Man, that smells good. Sorry, I know I'm not doing the best job of keeping the camera focused on what I'm doing, but this happens when you don't have a videographer. Okay, time to add the rice. What's that you say? You're gonna add rice to the hot oil and garlic? Yes, you are. That is the next step. In this hot oil, we are going to turn up the heat a little bit. Let's say to medium high over this hot stove. We're going to we're going to stir fry the rice, the raw rice in the hot oil and softened garlic. That's what happens now. Turn the heat up a little bit more even because I want to hear it. I want to hear it sizzling before taking the next step. Now, why are we doing this? Why are we stir frying the rice in the hot, the raw rice in the hot oil and garlic? Well, for two reasons. One is that we're imbuing the the taste of the garlic in the rice and let's face it, the garlic is just wonderful. But the other thing we're doing is we're drying off the rice a little bit and replacing the water with oil. So each of the grains of rice, if we're doing this correctly, is going to be encapsulated with a little bit of oil, which will also help it separate. When it's cooked, it will still be granado. It will still be grainy rice. Rice that doesn't stick together in a clump, but rather floats independently. Okay, so when you feel it start to stick at the bottom, like this, you can feel it, your spoon. And I always use a wooden spoon for this part. You feel your spoon, your spoon start to stick on the bottom of the pot. That's when you know you're there. So remember, um, we had two cups of rice. I'm gonna put in two cups of water. And I'm gonna add some more water. How much more? I'm gonna say about another half a cup of water. So it's not a two to one ratio by any stretch of the imagination, but neither is, neither is it a one to one ratio. It is maybe one and a quarter cups of water to one cup of rice. And so this is kind of delicate too to explain. Certainly by the time you're stirring this up right now on high heat, all of the rice should be submerged under water, as you see here, okay? And then it's gotta be submerged to at least a quarter, I'm gonna say a quarter of an inch worth of water. So before letting this rice come to a boil, I'm gonna add the salt, how much salt? I'm gonna say it's a teaspoon based on my intuitiveness. So there needs to be some salt added at this point. It doesn't have to be the total amount of salt that this rice will take, but for the cooking process, you gotta have some salt. Let's stir it up nice to distribute the salt and the water. Now we're gonna cover it at high heat to let it come to a boil. It's really nice if you have a pot that has a, a, a glass top because you can see what's happening. So even though it fogs up with the steam, we can see when it starts to boil. You're gonna, see, even if you don't have a glass top, you're gonna know when it starts to boil because the, um, 
the top is going to start dancing around. And it's really important that it come to a hard boil, but just briefly. It's really important that the rice come at first to a hard boil. It's not going to stay at a hard boil very long at all, but it has to get to that point so that the the boil causes the, the rice grains to crack and let in enough water to complete the cooking process, okay? If it doesn't come to that hard boil at first, the grains won't crack, then they'll always stay hard and your rice is gonna be hard and disgusting and not even fit for the hamsters in your life. A watch pot never boils. Ha! I watch it until I know it's boiling so that I can immediately drop the heat to low. So right now, it's covered. It's on super high heat, waiting for it to boil. And once it starts boiling, I'm gonna turn the temperature down to quite low, between off and low. As long as it stays boiling, as long as the, the evaporation is still occurring, that's where you wanna be. So you wanna- Another allow. important tip here at this point is not to lift up the lid. Once you put the lid on, it stays on until just about the end, until we have to maybe get in there and add a little more water or leave the top off. Those are the hacks that I was mentioning earlier to get to the right consistency of the rice. But at least to begin with, you leave the top on and you do not take it off. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but it's boiling. I'm gonna let it boil like that for at least a minute and a half to two minutes. Okay, that's long enough. It's been about a minute and a half. I'm gonna turn the heat down to quite low. And I'm not gonna uncover the pot. We just let the pot go uh, on its merry way. I'm gonna set my timer for, let's say 10 minutes and I'll come back and see how it's About doing. 10 minutes have gone by, still at the same amount of heat. And this is actually the moment of truth. So a bunch of steam still coming out. That's a good sign. That means there's still some liquid in there. And if we move this across, you will see that at the bottom, there's basically no more liquid left, hardly any liquid left. Now, at this point, the rice should be perfectly done. If, however, it is still a little hard, and this is a little tiny bit hard, which is okay, I don't mind it being a little hard. It's better to be a little hard than it be mushy. Mushy, you can't do anything about. Hard, you can add a trifle, and I mean like a couple of tablespoons, more, raw, more water to the mix. Turn the heat up a little bit and cover it back up and wait in another two or three minutes. I'm gonna set my watch timer for three minutes. And at the end of those three minutes, you're going to turn off the heat. You're gonna leave it covered, okay? Because the rice doesn't get to its final cooked state for at least 10 minutes sitting on the stove after you've turned off the heat. I should also note that when I tasted the rice just now, when I uncovered it, I tasted it for salt as well, and it's fine. It has all the salt that it needs, according to me. Some people like to put too much salt in their rice. Uh, I won't name any names, but their initials are Ray Dobbins. But this is fine. And if it's not, if it were a little bit undersalted, this is a perfectly fine time to add a couple more. Okay, my Apple Watch is telling me that three minutes have gone by. I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna let the pot sit on top of the stove. As the heat dies away, I'm gonna let it finish absorbing all of the steam and all of the water left in the pot. I'm just gonna leave it alone for the next 10 minutes. Ready for the reveal? Ah, still a little bit of steam, that's a good sign. And let me try a little bit of this. Mmm, good taste. Look, so we're taking our fork now and we're fluffing it up. It's kind of hard to do with only one hand, but we're fluffing it up to let the rest of the steam escape so that the rice will be fluffy. Now, because the rice is just a little bit wetter than I want, a little bit gummier than I want, I'm just gonna let it sit here with the top off, let the steam escape, and let it dry out a little bit more. So this business of adding a little water, covering it up, letting it sit, 
uncovering it. These are all part of the fine adjustments to get the rice to the point where you want it, which is in this case, you can see it's fluffy and the grains come apart. The grains fall apart. That's what we want. So here we have a little bit of the rice plated up with some steak that I just made. Kind of a plain Jane presentation. Don't even have any vegetables, but I'll, I'll be making myself some, don't worry. So I want you to notice that the rice is sticky enough to hold together in this ball for presentation, but even just a little bit of poking makes it fall apart into separate grains. And that's what we want because that is arroz granel. So I realize that this is a very long, detailed, wordy video on how to prepare what should really be a pretty simple dish, which is white rice. But just as a fashion designer will tell you that creating a simple black dress is one of the most challenging design projects there is because it's impossible to hide any problems with a simple black dress. It's the same with white rice. I mean, it, it is what it is. And if you screw it up, it's immediately apparent that you've screwed it up. So I've tried to describe in excruciating and probably boring detail how to make white rice to minimize the possibility of screwing it up and at the end how to how to adjust it a little bit. Um, there's plenty of other ways of making white rice uh, from cooking it up in bags or putting it in the microwave or God forbid boiling it in a big pot of water and then rinsing the entire mess in the sink which of course all you're doing is rinsing away all of the flavor of rice but you know there's plenty of other ways of preparing it. In my mind, this is the best. This is the one that I like the most. And uh, and you serve it as a complement to so many different dishes. Um, yeah, the Peruvians don't generally like put sauce on their rice, you know, whatever sauce comes, comes from the other plate, the other parts of the meal that you're, you're serving. And we certainly don't put like a pat of butter on the rice. That's just an abomination unto God. Anyway, I hope you liked it. I hope you make it.